Today I'm thrilled to have Mimika Cooney with us, originally from South Africa. Mimika is an award-winning baby photographer and beauty fashion photographer and the creator and host of Mimika TV, as well as the brains behind her new educational venture, Capture School. She's a published author, speaker and small business marketing expert and enjoys sharing her business marketing and photography knowledge online and through workshops. She owns a residential portrait studio based in Charlotte, North Carolina, specializing in beauty, fashion and baby portraiture. So hi Mimika, I'm really thrilled to have you here with us today. It's fantastic to talk with you. Yes, well, thanks, Nigel. I appreciate you inviting me to be here. It's always nice to talk. My pleasure. You're doing some good stuff out there. So let's jump right in. Um, Today we're talking about branding and how photographers can make a better impression in their business. So first of all, let's make sure that we're all on the same page because terminology is a little bit weird. Everybody has their own different ideas of what certain words mean, even though we use them all the time. So what does branding mean to you? Well, this is uh, one of these um, aspects of being a business owner and marketing that you often, it's like almost like a cliche, right? Like, oh, branding. Oh, it's just like a a Gucci or Cartier is the name of a a brand or a product. But what I'm finding is um, a lot of the research I've been doing and the reading and and the way things have changed because the the way we do business now is much different than it was about 10, 5, 10 years ago. Back in the day where, you know, you'd go, go shopping and you'd want to go find something, you, you know, you could pretty much were, well, even then were what we would call brand loyal. And now with the advent of the internet, you know, we've got so much information at our, our fingertips. It's hard to be able to tell one product or service from another. And this is where branding comes into play. Now, what photographers get confused about is when we not talk about branding, they think, oh, it's just the name of their company or website and a logo. And what branding really is, it's actually more about how people feel about you about you and your product, you know, how everything from the way you answer your emails to the font and color of your website, to the look and feel of, um, you know, your messaging, you know, how you present yourself when you, you know, how you, you treat people at a photo shoot, your customer service, a brand is all of those things. So when we're thinking about building a brand for our business, it's super important that we think about it as a whole, as opposed to, oh, there's my new logo and, you know, blast it everywhere and just hope everyone loves it. So yeah, there's and it's and one of those it's one of those aspects that I love talking about because we can go really deep into analyzing what a um, how a brand works for a company. Right. So it isn't just about pretty colors and a fancy logo, then. Yes, it goes far deeper than that because you know I really love reading these psychology books, like you know the psychology of buying and why people buy and what gets people to react, and often not it's the it's the unspoken clues that really get people to take action. Because um, nowadays, you know, to to quote Seth Godin, we're living in a connection economy, which means, you know, we're not in a broadcast economy where you can just put up a website, put up a shingle and, you know, build it and there it come. That doesn't work anymore. There has to be a deeper connection with people. And this is where branding comes into play. Um, And what I've found with a lot of um, photographers and business owners I've mentored along the years is that as creatives, we kind of have things backwards. Like if you were looking at it from st- for starting a business in a business industry, the first thing we would do is we would research the market, kind of get a feel of what the market needs, um, where you know where you feel that your service can fit in the market, and that's where you would start to go to position yourself, and then you would go and market yourself and working out your pricing. But what us photographers tend to do is we have it backwards. We tend to think, oh. I'm a photographer, I have a camera, we'll take pictures and you just will go out and shoot anybody you can get your hands on. And what happens then is the the messaging and the branding gets mixed up. And I'm sure you'd agree with people you've spoken to that you often find, especially like once they're, you know, they're excited about their business and they, they, they get going after a few months or a few years and then they start to realize why clients are starting to haggle with them on price or giving them major hassles about not feeling happy with the product and there's like a broken communication. And often when that you look back, you, you realize it's it started with the wrong branding. And I'll give you an example. This is precisely what happened to me with my photography business. Is um I got trained in England and I had the my business set up there. And then when my husband got transferred, we were well, moving his company to the US, I had to restart all over again. So I thought, okay, so here's a new slate, a new area. How can I rebrand myself? So back in England, I was um, as I was trading as Mimi Kakuni Photography, 
And then when I came to the US, I thought, well, you know, looking at it from a branding perspective, um, and if I want to hire people, I need to have more of a generic name. So I called myself photo lyrical photography. But then what I thought was, I didn't think really hard about the branding. I thought, oh, well, this will do. So I thought, well, black and, and purple seem to be, you know, really regal colors. So maybe that'll work for me. And then just started to go full ball marketing myself. But what I'd forgotten to think about was really, first of all, who I was as an artist, how I saw things. Because what happened um, down the line is when it became obvious is that because my branding and messaging was wrong, I was attracting the wrong clients. I was wondering, like, why are these fuddy-duddy people keep uh, phoning me? I'm like, where are these fun and vivacious and outgoing people who will give me, you know, the creative license to go and do the interesting poses or, you know, go do all these fun stuff where all the clients were, like, really stoic and serious and just wanted everything posed. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is, like, really driving me nuts. You know, I, I felt stifled. And then I started to do a, a little bit of deeper research and I worked with someone else who helped me give um, a good viewpoint. And, you know, even though I'd been doing it for like seven, eight years, we get uh, blinded by our branding and we don't see it. And sometimes it takes an outsider's perspective to say, okay, well, this is what you think you're saying, but what you're really saying is this. And then once I'd realized that, I had did a complete reband, rebrand of my business I re, uh, changed my name back to Mamika Cooney Photography. And then I looked through my wardrobe. My 14-year-old my daughter at the time was like, Mom, you're always wondering about, you know, how to brand yourself because you keep talking about all the stuff. Have you ever looked at your closet? 90% of your clothing is black, white, and blue. She says, I don't know what you're messing around with this purple. So it took a 14-year-old to tell me, hey, Mom, uh, I think your branding is blue. Like, duh. <laughs> you know? That's And that's naturally where I felt comfortable. So since I rebranded like uh, three years ago, I tell you, it's a completely different kettle of fish. I'm so much more excited about my business. Um, you know, and even though I was making money under the old brand, I just feel like it's more like me. The clients I'm attracting are the people who think like me, who are creative, who want something fresh, who don't want the norm of what everybody else is doing. They don't want a cookie cutter look. They want something that's innovative and um, so yeah, I mean, branding goes back much more than just the colors. It's definitely how people have felt about the brand. And yeah, as I said, you get me excited about this topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, 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 but it's important. And uh, so essentially, you know, what you're saying is that the the brand of the business is an extension of your personality. Yeah and an extension of the personality of your business. Yeah, that's true. I mean, and that's the thing is it's like, you know, for years I was wearing the wrong size shoe. You know, I was walking around providing a certain service and it's fine. I mean, looking at the numbers, the business was making money and, I, you know, I was ticking all the boxes. But deep inside, I always felt misunderstood and that people weren't really appreciating the creativity I had. And I felt stifled, like I, I wasn't able to be the real me. And, um, you know, when, you know, you, the other thing with branding is the hard part is, especially if you're one of the photographers who's been in business for years and you've been, you've been doing this the same way and you're like, why should I change? Because change is hard. And the truth of the matter is once you get your messaging right and you know who you're aiming for, you will lose clients. Now, th that's something I had to come to peace with. But let me show you an example that I did. What I actually did after going through this branding exercise and realizing who my ideal clients were, I went through my client um, database and out of like 732 clients I'd serviced over the previous sort of five odd years, I put them in categories. I, I put the ones that were the biggest spenders. Those were the, the ones that really loved what I do and maybe couldn't necessarily um, always afford it, but found the money or those who haggled with me on price and those who were just loyal brand followers, no matter what I price. And I kind of categorized them. And then I looked at, the, the, the clients who actually spent the most with me over the years. And out of the 732, I found 15 names, not 50, 15. And I realized those 15 clients had really were bringing in 80% of my business. So why was I messing around with the other however many percentage left over, 700 odd people who were not my ideal clients? I was wasting marketing money. I was constantly trying to keep up with what their demands were with. They always wanted a deal, like doing these little, like mini sessions. Oh, I cannot stand mini sessions. Why mini? Mini what? 
half price? Are you are you giving half the time or half the service or half the product? You know, one you know to, for a client, many means oh cheap. It means you're just cutting back on on quality, so they expect to get a deal. So for me, I did away with those mini events. So I lost a lot of people who then didn't come back to me because they just couldn't afford me anymore. But I realized I couldn't afford to keep them. They were keep taking up so much bandwidth in my company that everything from keeping them informed, you know, sending them birthday cards, I'm trying to remind them to come in for photo sessions. You know, I had a full-time, well, part-time um, lady, a studio, studio manager who would come in you know, and work in my home for three mornings a week because I work from home. And she, her main job was just to keep these people happy. And I'm like, here I am paying for someone to keep these people happy. And when I look at the profit margins, it's like it's costing me money. So it was a, a very difficult and hard process. It was like, you know, peeling off a, a, a plaster or a Band-Aid. It, you know, when you go slow, it hurts more. <laughs> and for me, the best thing was just to change my branding. I did I had a complete slate, ripped it off in one go. And yes, I lost a, a lot of people, but what I was able to do then was put their time and that money into creating deeper connections with those ideal clients. And it's definitely transformed my business now. My, my, my profit margins went up. My costs of running the business went down. Uh, my advertising went down because I was spending like my accountant had a freak out. I think the one year I spent almost 10 grand on advertising for like buying postcards and magazine ads and just trying to attract new clients. Um, because, you know, we, you know the whole saying, it, it costs you less to keep a client than to find a new one. And that was so true for me. And I just found, you know, I'd gone from instead of spending 10 grand on finding new people who really weren't my ideal clients, I just started to invest in trying to get better referrals and um, deeper connections with the right people. It just totally transformed my business. So, yeah, branding is a whole lot more than just a color or a name. I think a lot of people listening to this, you know, might be thinking to themselves, oh, boy, I think I might need to redo what I have. You know, it, it may be maybe my brand isn't working for me the way that it could and maybe yeah. i need to rebrand you know so and you and you you mentioned how you had been through that process but you know how, how difficult would you say it is for people to go through a rebrand process and how would they know if it's actually necessary to do that well it's a very good question and first of all the first thing to know is you know you look at your business and you think, okay, let me look at this realistically. Take the emotion out. Even though I might have had this name and this brand for years and years and years, is it working? Is it, number one, making me money? Number two, is it, am I working with clients that I want to work with or are they stealing my joy? And thirdly, you know, is it, are you growing? And you often find that when a brand is stale and it starts to lose momentum and there's just not excitement in it because if you're not excited about your brand, other people won't be excited. And that's often a sign, especially when people stagnate or they start losing clients and they can't figure out why. Almost like, you know, when you walk into a party and everyone stops talking as soon as you walk in, you're like, okay, were they talking about me? But now I don't know what they were saying behind my back. And it's unfortunately, that's what I find with myself is that people weren't willing to tell me, especially here in the States. I find people are much more cagey, especially living in the South where I am. They want to be polite. They don't want to offend you. But if there's a problem, they won't. They would rather not say anything. They'd rather go and complain to their friend. And of course, you know, bad news travels fast. Then come and tell me that they had an issue with something. So, and, you know, that, un that unhappiness breeds more unhappiness. And then it kind of comes back and you figure out, like, why is nobody calling me? And it comes to a stage that is, you know, as I said, for me, I couldn't afford not to rebrand because of looking at my business, how much it was costing me to keep those other people happy. Um, so that would be the first aspect. Now, the the one of the biggest things that I, I must mention is the hardest part for me wasn't necessarily just changing the color. It was the a mental and emotional issues. I didn't want to give up what I knew I built. It was like, this was my baby. I built it. I started it afresh. I was excited. Um, and from the outside, people looking in thought, oh, well, she looks successful. And, you know, this seems to be working. But for me, letting go was the hardest part of the whole process. That's for me to say, okay, something's not right, something's not working, and look myself in the mirror and say, okay, let's have a reality check here. That was actually the hardest part. It's almost like, you know, when someone has an addiction, when you, unless you're willing to say, listen, I have a problem, 
nothing's going to change and you can be an ostrich and pretend nothing's out, um, you know, nothing's wrong. But until you get to that stage where you realize, okay, something's not working. I need the help. That is the hardest part. And then the rest of it, it follows pretty easy. You know, there's also, I think, a potential danger here as well, because a Quite a few of the photographers that I've talked to, especially about their websites, and that they'll say things like, "Oh well, I I I just uh, I just finished revamping it, or I changed the colours, or I I uh, did this and that to it." And I'll say, "Well, so why did you do that? Were you going through a sort of a reinvention process or rebranding yourself or something?" Oh no no no, I just got bored with it. I got bored with the website and the way it looked, and and. There's a difference, I think, between the brand being truly mm-hmm. stale in the marketplace as opposed to the owner of the brand being so familiar with it because they see it every day that they just kind of get bored with it. Yeah, and that's what I think is uh, an important part about when people don't have a really a, a firm grasp about what their brand is, what it is saying in the community – they do flip flop from oh I don't feel like doing it. Let me try this and oh and what happens is from a client's perspective it's very confusing. If you're not consistent with your brand, in other words, keeping your fonts on your business card in your printed materials and on your website the same, you know if you keep changing your logo every couple of years just because you are bored with it, you're gonna lose you know your 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 loyalty, your brand loyalty. So it's almost like once and that's why I feel when someone does a rebrand. It really is ideal to work with a national brand strategist or someone who does this as a job. Like it's actually better to hire a graphic artist to do one for you because as photographers, just because we know Photoshop, we think we can do it all ourselves. But it's a difference between having a photography eye and a design eye. Now, granted, I've met many photographers who are graphic artists and that's fine. But what I find as well with this process is having someone else's eyes look at things often shows you something that you're missing or maybe points out something that you didn't think was that obvious. So when you, you're thinking of a brand, you've got to really, first of all, do it properly and then keep it consistent throughout. So once you decide on something, and I think from what I remember reading, usually a brand has a life cycle of anything between five and eight years. So usually around about year seven is when you start to see people revamping things, but they don't necessarily change it. They might maybe add something to it or just slightly freshen it up maybe. So, yeah, and especially with websites, like I remember when um, I was in England and I was, um, uh, most of my business came from search engine optimization because I've got a web design background and my husband's in internet marketing. So for me, you know, nine out of 10 of my, my bookings came through the internet. Now, many photographers at that time, that was based on before Flash and all that came out, before all the these templates you have now, this was like something like, when was that, like um, 2003, 2004? Um, people would look at my website and say, oh, there's way too much text. You know, as a photographer, all you need is pretty pictures and then people will will book you based on that. There's more to that. Again, it was like, what was my brand saying about me? I was getting those bookings because I was, had the consistency in the way that things looked as well as the content I provided with them. So, I mean, I know this whole web design side, we could have a whole nother discussion on that. But again, it was, you know, the consistency where people would say, Wherever I look, I hear about your your business. And it's like it's the same colors. Like, oh, I drove down so-and-so and I saw this and it reminded me of you. When somebody says that about you, that's when you know your branding works. People assimilate. Like if I said the words red and white and pop, what would you think? Exactly. They've entrenched their brand that no matter how they um, they design the, the logo and, the, and you know, if, even, even if they wanted to try and change it, people would throw an uproar because people are so emotionally invested in the brand. Like you, you remember the story back in the day in the eighties where Pepsi um, wanted to change their formula. They call it um, new Coke. Yeah, that was it. And they went and tried to change the branding and people got an uproar. They're like, how dare you change our love Coke? This is what we you, we love. And because they thought people wanted something new and because the CEOs and all of the management were bored with the way things looked, they thought maybe we need to liven things up again. And what they discovered was that they actually lost a lot of, um, you know, brand recognition because of, of that. So, and I think that's what photographers do on a on a smaller scale is because they haven't figured out really what their branding is. They're kind of testing it and trying it and doing this and changing. And then they lose people. So, yes, it's definitely 
one of those things we have to look ourselves in the mirror, look at our website and slap across the, ourselves across the face and say, have a wake up. What is our branding saying? And let's figure out how to make it better. And, you know, the Gap went through the same thing. You know, all they tried to do was change their logo and they spent quite a significant amount of money actually, you know, with designers and stuff like that, trying to come up with a new logo. They put it out there and they they, they got slammed. Yeah, exactly. And they, had, they just had to abandon it. Uh, I think right now McDonald's are doing a slight tweak. In, they changed the way that Ronald, Ronald McDonald looks. They changed his costume or something. And there's been some very mixed reactions to that too. You know, so it, it, when, you, when you think of a, a gigantic corporation like McDonald's and you think, well, how could they possibly do themselves any real damage just by changing clothes on their mascots? And, and then you see the results and, and you look at it and you go, whoa, no, that really did, <laughs> had some backlash. You imagine, you know, the kind of um, turmoil that it would create in a small business that has you know, tried to establish itself and then suddenly switches identity midstream. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's why, um, you know, with photographers especially, because a lot of them, are, um, majority of photographers who start in business start their business because they love photography, not because they're business people starting a photography business. And this is something that I find is a big reason why we see a lot of um, businesses closing doors is because they didn't start with the business in mind they started it as just a hobby oh this is fun so you know my friends say i've got a good eye and oh i should charge for my my work um why if you're enjoying it as a hobby it's not fun free money because as soon as you start to really be serious about it as a business you realize that it's hard work and it's hard work to keep consistent consistent with that so by just saying, oh, I'll have a, I'll throw a website up there and just pick a name, you know, memories by so and so, and start trading at the name, and then a couple of, you know, two or three years later, they're like, why isn't this working? It's because they didn't start with the right foundation right in the beginning. So before people jump into running a business, starting it or even rebranding it, they really need to think long and hard where they eventually want to be, and work backwards. Like, who are the kind of clients I want to service? What is my style? Like, what? who do I like working with? And, you know, working yourself backwards that way, like for my example here, when I did my rebrand, you know, I had the very black and purple, very sort of more traditional look. And then when I rebranded to the white with the blue, I had more of a modern, fresh look. So, and from there, it was because I wanted to deal with more like younger clients who were more computer savvy, who like to do, who like, who like to get their hair and their nails done and um, a lot of my clients that I, um, I, I targeted were, you know, uh, moms who perhaps waited later to have their babies, and a lot of them had problems falling pregnant, so they would spend a lot of money on IVF. So their values were far different than someone who, you know, happened to be younger and would fall pregnant at the drop of the hat. So, you know, there, there's different value systems even involved in, in a market. And I had to think, you know, how was my branding coming across to those people? Did it resonate with how they felt about things? Did it tell them this is the kind of style that I do and this is why, you know, there's that connection? So it's almost like dating. You know, are you even going to go approach, a, a, you know, a girl who, who doesn't really necessarily appeal to you or a guy, you know, like if you thought about this as speed dating, you know within the few, first few seconds whether this person is chemistry and if there's not, you're like, why should I bother? So we got to think of it that way that no, and almost – with branding, we are, you know, we wooing our clients. We're having a dating process. We want to attract them. We want them to give us a call and ask us for a first date. A lot of the websites that I do reviews for, you know, I, it, it, it's literally like, uh, you know, a guy walking into a bar saying to a girl, hey, can I buy you a drink? And she says, well, yeah, okay, sure. He gives her the drink and says, right now, who are we going to invite to the wedding? Well, first she'd probably slap him and then... Yeah, or even worse, he'd walk right up to her and say, hi, honey, will you marry me? And she'd be like, who the heck are you? Do I know you and where are you coming from? You are weird. Get away from me. You know, weirdo. No, that's creepy. <laughs> we could go on for, for hours, I know, about all this stuff. But let, let's see if we can give some people some actionable advice and, and, and try and put things into some kind of... a. A, a, a logical order that people might want to go through, or, or, or at least some kind of a uh, kind of a checklist or something that they can say, okay, I need to rebrand myself, or I, or I don't. I just need to tweak what I have. Where should people start with all this? Well, like I mentioned earlier, definitely the brand exercise of first of all, like 
look at who your clients are. Like if you're a photographer who's been in business for a while, or even if you're starting out, you know, you, you would have had some kind of idea of who you, you want to target. So I would, first of all, go through who you've, you've serviced before and start to categorize them into areas of, you know, the people you want to work with. And then the ones that you don't, we call it dump the duds, you know, say goodbye, come to peace about the fact they're never going to be your client. If they haggle with you and expect a deal and always throwing the saying that, oh, you're so expensive, um, you just know that's not, not a right fit for you. Second of all, which one of the exercises I actually found quite eye opening was I went onto Pinterest and I started to create a board that of the things I loved, everything from the places I wanted to go on holiday to the room, um, decor ideas I like to other pe- other types of photography that inspired me, uh, um, you know, art places, you know, outdoor living spaces. And what's funny is, you know, when you're looking at things like that, it's almost like your, um, your subconscious ta- starts to speak and you start to pick things that naturally you gravitate towards. And then when, when, once you've got that, then you start to pick out the anomalies, like, you know, those sort of outliers that don't necessarily fit and you take those out. Then you stand back and you look at it, and this is what a brand strategist would do. They would say, what is this board saying to me? What are the themes? What are the colors? Like for mine, you know, coming from a Mediterranean background, my dad's Greek, my mom's English. I was born in South Africa, which makes me complete complete fruit salad. But anyway, I had a natural Mediterranean feel to my things. I was always picking lots of rooms with lots of natural lights, um, you know, seascapes, lots of blue modern sort of Ikea type looking rooms, very, you know, non-traditional. Yet my my branding was traditional. So there was a complete disconnect. And looking at the Pinterest board, I had a um, a branding uh, a graphic designer look at that as well. And we, I mean, she gave me a few options. I wasn't thrilled with in the beginning, but at the same time, once we worked through the process, eventually the one I went with was, you know, much more simplified. And, but it was the coloring and, and the feel of the brand that really, was true to me. So, you know, that's definitely, and then another thing to do is um, ask your friends and family and those who know you well, like what would be the top three things they would describe about you? Like even from a personality perspective, like for me, it was, um, you know, it could even be like seven to 10 words, but you can kind of collate and you'll start to find a um, common thread. Like a lot of them would always say, oh, vivacious or funny or um, happy or, um, you know, what kind of words would they they associate with you? And those words give off a feeling or an emotion. And that would be your emotional connection with your client. So again, you know, all these little aspects of looking at it from more than just a color um, and and taking it a bit further down there. And again, of course, if you can afford to um, work with a graphic designer and, you know, you can find them on the internet, there are very uh, there's several places you can get um, great logos designed at a, you know a very low cost. I think one of them is um, 99designs.com. I think for 99 dollars you can get a logo done. And then, you know even on Etsy, there's some of these graphic designers that provide you know can work with you. There's also creativemarket.com. You can buy pre-made logos or you can work with someone to tweak one for you. So you know and having a th- uh, another set of eyes really does help to kind of help you get what you're wanting to say out into putting your into your brand. And then, you know, once you have all of those, you know, elements in place, then you can build a website that fits fits in with that. You can you can design your offline marketing materials, you know, letterheads and, and postcards and all that kind of stuff as well. And and then don't forget of course things like the you know, your Facebook page cover photo and your Google Plus cover photo and all those social media type things too Uh, so it's important to have all of those elements all working together right yes so i mean so when someone looks for you there's like a consistent feel like i mean even on my social media um but you know cover templates like i have they're not all the exactly the same idea but what i did is i did um my daughter helped me with we had the tripod set up and we did different expressions of me wearing the same outfit. So when you go on these different platforms, you'll see me in the same outfit, but maybe the expression is slightly different. But it def- definitely keeps it consistent with the white background, the blue shirt. So when people start to look at my branding, you know, and then pops of red now and again, just to kind of create that sort of contrast. So, and I think that's becoming quite recognizable that, and even the clothing I'm, I wear, you know, it's very much a sort of turquoise color, sea blue kind of color. So, um, and that's when you know that you you kind of your messaging is right when people feel like wherever they go they see the same message. 
when they get in touch with you, when they, especially on the telephone, or, and when you meet with them in person, they seem to be much more at ease and much more comfortable because that they feel comfortable with the brand. It's something that they resonate with. It's something that means something to them, or it communicates those shared ideas and shared values, uh, not just about photography, but about all kinds of things as well. Even like five years ago, I found when um, people were phoning me, that, you know, a lot of photographers get annoyed and they say, well, how much is your session and your eight by 10? Basically what they're saying is, I've kind of checked you out online. You know, you're available. I can get as much information about you as I want online. If, if I'm phoning this person, it's because I'm trying to get a feel for who they are. And they, a lot, most often times they don't know what to ask you. So what's the first thing they can ask you is how much do you cost? And some photographers get um, insulted by this, thinking, you know, surely you should, you know, that shouldn't be the first question. But basically what it is is they're trying to get to know you as, a, as you know, is there that connection? What I've seen online I like. I've liked the pictures because let's put it this way. You know, having great photography is a given. If you aren't a good photographer that's got good lighting techniques, you know, it's just not going to work. We've got to go further than that now. We have to work twice as hard for the same amount of effort as we would have even five or seven years ago. That when someone's phoning you or emailing you and making an inquiry, believe me, they have checked you out. They're just doing a final few. They want a, a reason to really go with you. So, yeah, I mean, by then, you know, your branding would have been the non-verbal, non-spoken things that hopefully whatever your brand is saying out there in the general marketplace, that by the time they speak to you, you know, I mean, of course, there's going to be the people who do phone you that maybe aren't your fit and uh, I call those the champagne taste and Coca-Cola money. They, they don't necessarily, they can never afford you, but because they feel like they can, they still will try. But that's when you know that you can filter those people out. And um, yeah, so your brand would have been speaking for you. Your website would have been speaking for you and telling the client, you know, what it is this person does, what it is the value is, what kind of photography they're going to get. And as long as we make sure we are appealing to the emotions and we can speak and resonate to what we really want to say, hopefully by then it will make it a much more easier experience with actually, you know, connecting with clients. I think folks have got some really good stuff to think about there and some good things to get started with. This has been a really great chat. Thank you, Mimika. I really appreciate it. I've certainly picked up some good pointers and ideas here and I'll probably even be going back and taking another look at my branding stuff at some point I'm sure and putting a sort of a more critical eye over it and uh, and I'm sure that people listening to this will have some great aha moments too so thank you so much. Thanks for having me on it's been lots of fun. Oh you, you're more than welcome it's been great to, great to have you on here and you keep up the great work I know that you're doing some good stuff we'll be maybe you know have you back on here again and we can get into some more of this stuff in some more detail. That'll be perfect thanks so much. <laughs> All right you take care now. Okay bye.